the homage to the Buddha, homage to the Dhamma, and homage to the Noble Sangha. Today, meditation is about eightfold path meditation. So you can see um, in the eightfold path, there is this right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So we are going through this eightfold path. So let's look at what is right view. Right view is the understanding about the suffering, understanding about the origin of suffering, understanding about the cessation of suffering, understanding about the cessation of the path leading to the testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Is that good enough? No? No? Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so the understanding about the uh, cessation of suffering, uh, <clears throat> that is the path leading to cessation of suffering. So that is what's mentioned over here, the knowledge of suffering, knowledge of the origin. Origin of suffering, Knowledge of cessation of suffering, knowledge of the way practice, of practice leading to the cessation of suffering. So, here the, we talk about the suffering. So, what is this? Um, this is about the Four Noble Truths. So, Four Noble Truths, again, you can see is explained in the website over here. Um, so, what month is the Four Noble Truth? So here we have the first noble truth, that the birth is suffering, aging is suffering, sickness is suffering, death is suffering, sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, distress are suffering. Union with what is displacing is suffering, separation from what is pleasing is suffering, not getting what one wants is suffering. In short, the five aggregates of grasping are suffering. So it is about the, the first noble truth. So there's a bit of a description, birth, aging, sickness, death, which we will look at in the greater detail in a little while. And then Buddha explained that there is this noble truth of origin of suffering. And it is this craving which gives rise to rebirth, accompanied by pleasure, delight, finding fresh delight now, here and now there, that is to say craving for sensuality, Craving for existence, craving for non-existence. So this is the cause of suffering. This is how we get the, the suffering created because of these things. Now, what is this craving for sensuality? Let us say that um, you work and you earn money. At the end of the month, you pay your bills your electricity bill, gas bill, rent and all those things. After paying all those bills, you left with, let's say, five dollars in your pocket. Now, you know, we don't have any pleasure paying the bills, electricity, gas and all those bills. Now, you think I will have some sort of a fun and I will go and buy a mango from a mango seller. So, you went to the mango seller with your five dollars in your hand but the mango seller is um, selling two types of mango. One is more expensive than five dollars. The other one is sort of five dollars or less. That one is a bit rotten. You know, insect bites and those things are there. Now you think, okay, this is a gain for me. I will buy this rotten mango, cut down the, you know, the insect bites parts and I will get, let's say, the big the good mango is let's say ten dollars. This one got insect bites. I can cut it down this part. And if I spend ten dollars, then I will get you know about one and a half of the amount that I will be getting from the ten dollars. So I think it's a gain for me. So I buy that rotten mango. That is what I can afford. So then you eat the mango. When you eat the mango, you get some sort of a pleasure. So it's a sensual pleasure. Now that becomes the sensual craving for sensuality mentioned here. And now you define your life. Okay, this is how I live. 
what i do i earn and then i am at the end of the month after paying all the bills i let it fight on us i go to the rotten mango seller and i mean it's a fortunate for me to have rotten mango seller if, if he is not there then you know, i can't afford it so i go to that one and i will buy a rotten mango and eat that part and i live you see because of the pleasure you feel like living by paying the bills and all those things you don't feel like living but because of the pleasure you think i will live like that one. so you define your existence this is how i am going to exist so that becomes the craving for existence and after a little while after some times now you think it's okay for me not to have the mango what whatever way if i can get that pleasure that i got out of the mango now i am talking about the pleasure for that pleasure i am happy to exist i am happy to stay so that is called craving for non existence the craving for non existence or the vibhavatana does not mean that i do not want to exist but rather it would say i am happy to exist without the mango but with the feeling kind of feeling the equivalent level of feeling generated by the mango so now you can see we got the craving for sensuality craving for existence and craving for non existence demand so that is the uh, the knowledge the truth of the origin of suffering noble truth of the origin of suffering and buddha is saying that this is actually coming when the eye is enticing and pleasurable this craving gets established and this is where the craving establish and so ear nose tongue body when it is enticing and pleasurable and we get this cravings okay so next third noble truth the noble truth of the cessation of suffering and it is the complete fading away and extension of the craving it is forsaking abandonment liberation from it detachment from it and so we are talking about the abandonment of those three kinds of cravings craving for sensuality craving for existence craving for non existence those three kind of craving and then the buddha explain the noble truth of the way of practice leading to cessation of suffering it is the eightfold path so now we come back to the right view again so we come back to the right view that part so now you can see you went through sort of a understanding about this birth aging sickness death and it is caused by our craving and it is three kind and having go reach up to that level now you think i am suffering i am subject to this suffering why am i subject to suffering because of my craving now what is the logical step for us to do next if it is because of the suffering that i have this because of the craving i have this suffering then it is logical for me to give up the craving so that leads to the thought of renunciation the sort of renunciation thought of non malevolence thought of non harm that is what is called right thought because i find that it is suffering and it is suffering is caused by the craving now i am giving up those things so there is this this um, thought of renunciation i will be giving up that and these three terms are linked to each other as well the thought of renunciation to the what to what extent i have thought of renunciation to that extent i have thought of non malevolence to what extent i have thought of non malevolence to that extent i have thought of non let's take a simple example let's say a pirate's dish has been reduced to 50% so you see that ad is not in the tv 
and now you want to go and buy it. When you are going to buy that one, other people already have seen this one and they bought the, this thing. And there is one pirate dish left. And two people are running to buy that pirate dish. What will happen? Both of them put their hand to the pirate dish. And one will be dragging on their direction, the other one will be dragging on the other person's direction. So there will be a bit of a fight. So what if someone less greedy and thinks, oh, I don't need this fire dish, I will let this person have that one. So that person, so when you, you give up this desire for fire, have, to have the fire dish, so then another person will be saying, you, you say you have them, other person say thank you and take it. So there is no point. To the extent I have the ability to give up my desire for the fire dish, to that extent, I have the non-malevolence, non-injury. To that extent, I have the thought of non-harm. So you can see these three are link. How we come to the right thought? We came to the right thought from the right view. Without the right view, I don't have the right thought. Because, because it is suffering and having seen the cause of suffering as the craving, I gave it up. I have the thought of renunciation and then I got the thought of renunciation, thought of non malevolence and thought of non harm Now these three parts, that is this thought of renunciation, that is the non-greed path, they become three parts. And then the thought of non malevolence is the non-hate path. Thought of non harming is the non-delusion path. So I am now following a good path coming from the right view to right thought. So now I want to give up these things and I go in these good directions. Whatever things that are in the green path will then be an obstruction to me. So then you decide that whatever things that are in the green path is an obstruction, I should be giving up that. What are the things in the green path? The stealing is in the green path as well as the, the line is in the great path. You see, I would be lying because of I'm, because I am greedy. For example, a robber may be stealing something and if the king or the police is asking him, he would be saying, did you steal? No, I didn't steal, sir. Out of fear, he would be saying that. So you can see that a greedy person do lie. So since I am following the good path, I will be giving up lying. And again, I am following through the, the non-hate path. It is in the hate path, we have the slander and the harsh page. So since I am following the non-hate path, I will be giving up the things that are in the hate path, that is harsh page and the slander. And again, I am following the non-harming path, that is the non-delusion path. So since whatever thing that I am in delusion path is an obstruction to me, I will be giving up those. So what are the things that are in the delusion path? The frivolous talks, you know, the useless talks that we do, they are in the delusion path. So I will be giving up that. So now you can see, we come to the Right speech, refraining from lying, slander, harsh speech and the frivolous talks and that is the right speech. So you can see we start with the right view, right thought proceeds from the right view and similarly the right speech proceeds from the right thought. They are linked to each other. Again you can see since I am following this thought of renunciation that is non greed path, it is in the green path that I have the stealing. Since I am following the non-green path, I will be giving up things that are in the green path that is the stealing. It is in the hate path that we go and kill. Since we are following the non-hate path, we will be giving up killing. It is in the delusion path that we do have the uh, sexual misconduct. Since I am following the non-delusion path, I will be giving up 
the sexual misconduct. Now you can see we come to the right action. So the, from the right view we get the right thought, from the right thought I get the right speech, from the right speech I get right action, refrain from taking life, taking what is not given, refrain from sexual misconduct. From the right action I go into the right livelihood. In the right livelihood, our disciple having given up wrong livelihood keeps himself up by right livelihood. So, in the right livelihood, a monk, for example, sort of refraining from drawing lines in the, the soil because the small insects can be there and, you know, cutting down trees and sort of thing, they refrain from those things. Although Buddha explained in those, those terms, it is uh, right livelihood is directly linked into the, the getting rid of the conceit, I am. It was the Sahampati Mahabharma, probably you might know, the Sahampati Mahabharma is the, uh, the, the Brahma who united Buddha to preach them. And he told me that it is uh, from the right livelihood, you get rid of the conceit, I am. By that time, it was a very big, you know, so far apart things for me to understand. I will explain that one with a small example. Let's say there is this um, starvation time on earth. And fortunately, you have a couple of noodles packet at your home. You have eaten and a couple of noodles packet are there at your home. So you eat and then you go outside and sort of see and then you can see on the street people are going here and there looking for food. What is the thought that is coming to you? Is it the thought, oh these poor people? Or is it the thought that I have a couple of noodles packets at home? It is the thought that I have a couple of noodles packets at home that is coming to you first. This one becomes apparent, you know, that sometimes when we have cancer, let's say someone is coming to you and say that I have cancer, straight away you say, yeah, I do have that one as well. That person did not ask whether you have the cancer, but you are actually popping up that I do also have this. So you see, me comes first. So likewise, I have two packets of noodles at home comes first. So you become arrogant because of that one. You see, we not only we have noodles, packets, we have so many things. We have properties, house, you know, that we have money, cars and so on. So, children, your dog, whatever thing, that makes you to go into this arrogant state. We don't have right livelihood. We live in wrong livelihood. Who has got the right livelihood? The right livelihood would be for a monk who is going with his arms bowled, pindapatha, looking for food, not doing any jobs. That sort of person can have the right livelihood. We do jobs and sort of things and we earn money, therefore we don't have the right livelihood. You see, I saw this particular thing um, on a temple, how one become arrogant because of this food and things. We went for alms giving to these monks and then um, the monk after eating those food, he said he did not have any food yesterday. Um, that person who was actually bringing food didn't come to the temple. So we were so sad and we were talking to him but he was smiling. And uh, we were asked why. He was saying that um, he had a couple of noodles packets at home and uh, in the temple. So he boiled them and ate it. You see, now he became arrogant because of that. It is not that we want monk to, be, monk to suffer, but it is, you can see, that there is a bit of arrogance comes up because of that. Otherwise, what would happen? He would be understanding, this is the suffering. This is what these normal, ordinary persons in their household life, they go to work and, you know, earn money, they suffer because of this. And the real nature would come to, 
you know, arise for him. Otherwise, he would be say, thinking, I can live somehow. That is why Buddha is telling monks not to have any raw food. It is forbidden for them to have in their temple premises. They can't even have salt. They cannot keep anything. So then they would understand this suffering. So now you can see the, the wrong livelihood is directly linked to the conceit. I am. I am. I, I am here. I have these things. I have properties and so on. Now this Eightfold Path is um, makes four meditations. The Noble Eightfold Path meditation consisting of four meditations. First one is the development of the body, Bhavita Kaya. Development of virtue, Bhavita Sila in Pali. Development of mind, Bhavita Chitta. Development of wisdom, Bhavita Prajna. That those two things we were just talking about, that is the right action and the right livelihood. The development of the body consisting of those two. And when you have those two, that lead to the concentration due to desire. The concentration due to desire is that you want to attain Nibbana. For that one you get the concentration. So how come? These two link to that concentration due to desire, the right action. Let's examine it. If I don't have the right action, what do I have? The right action is refraining from killing, stealing, sexual misconduct. So if I don't have that one, then I will be doing this killing, stealing, sexual misconduct. Suppose I am going to kill an animal. So the first, the thought come to me that I will kill that animal. So when you have that I will kill that animal or thing, then you get a very long breath. You breathe heavily, I will kill. And when you lift up the knife to kill that animal, again you breathe heavily. And when you are stabbing the animal, again you breathe heavily. You get a long breath. What if I am not doing that? Then I don't have to breathe in to think that I will kill. I don't have to breathe in to lift up the knife. I don't have to breathe in to kill that breathing thing. So that means the cessation of in-breathing, inhaling and exhaling. That is the fourth jhana concentration. So from the fourth jhana concentration, you go to concentration due to desire. You see that nothing is lasting in the world. What is lasting is the Nibbana. So this person has the desire to um, go into this one, to the attain Nibbana. And again, let's say one of the other, the wrong actions, that is stealing. You know the feeling that you have in the Sunday afternoon? You remember Monday, Monday morning. What is it? I have to go to work tomorrow. You take, without noticing, you take long breath. You sometimes do not know why I took that breath. It's because you remember that I have to go to work. The going to work is considered as stealing. The Aryan disciples don't go to work. Hmm? So, we normally explain this on, on the third day. So, if I am not going to work, I don't have to breathe in for that. So, the, my in-breathing and uh, out-breathing, inhaling and exhaling will stop. And that lead to the fourth jhana concentration and then I go to the concentration due to this one. Which, which one help us to have this one, the right action? It is the right livelihood. You see, a monk could be living with a begging bowl in the hand, going there, asking for food. But can you do that? Can you take a plate in your hand and go to somebody else's, please give me something to eat, give me something to eat? You can't. Because why? What's wrong with that? We have the arrogance. We have the arrogance, it's not good to do that. 
you know then it makes me a sort of a bad person or sort of thing so because we have the wrong livelihood it is not helping us wrong livelihood helping the the wrong action if i have the right livelihood it will helps me to have the right action because i have the i have less conceit i'm less arrogant therefore i can go and ask help from somebody else you would normally ask a help from somebody because you are arrogant you know it's not good for me to do that so here you can see the right livelihood helping us right action and from the right action you go to the concentration you to desire so that is called the development of the body and then there is a one above one below and that one is called the right speech and the right effort when i have the right speech and the right effort then i have development of virtue and that leads to the concentration due to mind called chitta samadhi so how do i get the concentration due to mind you know let's say you are studying for an exam and there are couple of people talking here and there nearby you you know very noisy what do you think you thinking oh these guys if they go away it will be good for me you know in library or your home or whatever thing it is so it's so much trouble isn't it when they are you talking the noise the same thing is happening in your mind when your mind is you know spinning with these words and sort of thing and um, it's like a, it's not like a smooth thing you know like a, you know the benz car and you know that the motorbike sort of thing they are when they, they are very noisy the benz car is smooth engine so if you have this verbal formations running inside your mind you know that guy did this on this guy did this on and so on and it's much trouble like there's two people are talking nearby you while you are trying to study if they are not there very quiet if these things in, inside you is not running the words going from these these things to these words patterns then you you are happy so that is this the second jhana concentration so how do we get that one because of the right speech what is the wrong speech the right speech is refrain from lying harsh speech and frivolous talks and slander so the wrong speech is the other way around that you are lying sort of thing when i say this curry is really good this food is yummy and so on, then i am sort of lying why what is the truth truth is the four noble truth that is the birth age and sickness death that it is suffering and there is this cause of suffering and so on so if i am telling someone then i can only speak of that i can speak of the truth truth is the sickness aging sickness that is suffering and the cause of suffering cessation of suffering and the path leading to the cessation of suffering that's all i can talk about so either i can be silent or i can talk about that so if i talk about this you know this tree is nice and so on, so they consider to be sort of lying so these are verbal formations they are made from this in what is called initial application and sustained application that's how we talk is pal it is called vitakka vichara initial application is something like that you see someone coming so you know that recognize there's a person coming that is your initial application and the sustained application is that when that person is sort of close by then you can see ah the, her hair is long so she, that she is coming or otherwise the hair is shorter that this person is he so so that is the sustained application or maybe you know the example a uh, bee is coming to the flower is the initial application it's gyrating around the flower is called sustained application so using the initial application and sustained application we talk so if i have the right speech this initial application and sustained application ceases and then that lead to the second jhana concentration so that your mind is very smooth you know that this talking outer talking and the inner talking all those things are stopped inside that so that is the concentration due to mind 
So now you can see to have that one, what is helping us is the right effort. The right effort is the one helping me to have the right speed. From the right speed, I get the concentration due to mine. So we need to learn about the right effort. It's very important about this right effort. It is fourfold. So first one, here the monk rouses his will, makes an effort, steers up energy, exerts his mind and strives to prevent the arising of unarising, evil, unwholesome mental states. What are the evil, unwholesome mental states that has not arisen in you? They are the sensual thought, ill will thought and the harming thought. Do you have sensual thought right now? You don't have that. You don't have ill will thoughts. You don't have harm in thoughts. But when you go out of this door, you get those sensual thoughts, ill will thoughts. One good example is that, let's say if you have a child and that person is sick and then probably you can go to work early. So you went to the street, maybe um, 8.30, you put your car to the street, 9 o'clock you go to be at work. Maybe someone on the street driving in front of you. It is a 60 year old. That person is driving to 30. Maybe it's a sick person, old person going to the hospital. But what do you think? You are thinking it would be good. This type of persons are not there at this particular moment. No? So you get the ill will thought. Let this guy be dead sort of scenario in, in your mind. So maybe you go out and you see beautiful women, beautiful men and having beautiful babies and so on. And having seen them, you get the sensual thought. So you can see at home, kind of you are okay. When you go out, you get this sensual thought, daily thoughts. So then you put effort. Having known that these sensual thoughts, daily thoughts will, can, can arise for me. So you put effort uh, to prevent the rising. So you can see this one is then the the pre thing. Before it is happening, you take your effort. Mm -hmm. So that is the right effort, the first right effort. And there is a second right effort. He rouses his will, makes an effort, steers up energy, exerts his mind and strives to overcome evil unwholesome mental states that have arisen. So what are the evil unwholesome mental states that are already with you. They are the greed, hate and the delusion. Do you have the greed all the time? No, you don't have greed all the time. Sometimes you are angry, so then you have the hate. At that time you don't have the greed. But you do have, all the time, you have the delusion. The delusion is there all the time. When there is delusion, the ignorance, for example, then slowly it generates the craving, the greed, and then the hate. Those things come, come to arise. So, one person with a wisdom may be thinking, hang on, a little while ago, didn't we say that we don't need this sensual thought, ill will thought, and the harm in thought? If I give up sensual thought, ill will, and harm in thought, how can I get greed, hate, and delusion? It is not like that. It is because the what led you to come to the right thought, the thought of renunciation, thought of non violence thought of non harm, because it is the suffering and the understanding that the cause of suffering has the craving. That's why you renounce. But you did not renounce at the at once. It's like that, you know, on a rainy day. Let's say muddy water is coming to your garden and having seen this muddy water but it is raining, you can't get out, you stay there. And the next day also you see the muddy water is coming to the garden when it is raining. And third day you decide, no, I will stop this one, I will put an end to this one and then you go and close that muddy water path. So what happened to the muddy water already there in your garden? It is there, isn't it? So this is the muddy water we are talking about. This is your body. You let it happen. And so there is this delusion because of that one. And then therefore you have the that I want to exist. I am here. I want to exist. Therefore I have this 
all the other things, greed and the hate generated from that one. So having known that one, now I would I put effort to overcome those evil things. Now you can see this is a forced thing. It has already happened and I want to get rid of it. And there is the third effort. The third effort is he rouses his will, makes an effort, steers up energy, exerts his mind and strives to produce unarising wholesome mental states. To produce unarising wholesome mental states. What are the unarising wholesome mental states? It is this a stream enterer. A stream enterer is the a person who attained to the first stage of sainthood. At that particular time, he does not regard anything in the world as mine. It is mine. He is not taking those things as mine. Because of that one, his mind becomes very vast, expanded and greatly grown. Because of that, he has the faith about the Buddha, about the Dhamma, about this teaching and so on. So one would be thinking, I will have such a faith of a stream enterer. So in other words, that I want to become a stream enterer. So that is the unarisen wholesome mental states that we are trying to produce. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the third one. You can see this is the first one to produce these skillful states. And there is now another one, the fourth effort. He rouses his will, makes an effort, steers up energy, exerts his mind and strives to maintain wholesome mental states that have arisen, not to let them fade away, to bring them to greater growth, to the full perfection of development. So here we are talking about the wholesome mental states that have arisen. So what are they? In the third effort, we said that I want to have the the faith of the stream winter. I want to have then such a mind, that vast mind, expanded mind. Now he understands that one, when one becomes the stream winter, when you come to that particular state, the mind is mind becomes vast, but it is not the nibbana. It is something sort of helping for you to go to the nibbana. So having understood that one, now he Try to maintain it because he knows that I can go to the next level using this law. I can go to the next level and so on. But he understands this is not the Nibbana. This is something towards the Nibbana. The same thing is not the Nibbana itself. So now he is trying to maintain that. And so those are the four efforts. Without the effort you don't get anything. Without the right view you don't get the right effort. When you without the right effort you don't get anything, you don't get any concentration, anything. So these four efforts are very valuable. So now you can see we got two things, the development of the body, the right action and right livelihood, which led to the concentration due to desire. And then we have the development of the virtue and consisting of right speech and the right effort, which led to the cessation of this we get the concentration due to mind. Hmm? So now we have two things. There's a one above, one below. The one above is the right thought and the right concentration. So the development of the mind called Bhavita Chitta consisting of right thought and right concentration. Now this leads to the concentration due to effort. So here, you know the right thought is a thought of renunciation, thought of non malice and thought of non harm And what is right concentration? The right concentration is, I will be concentrating mind, my mind around those three terms. That is thought of renunciation, thought of non malice and thought of non harm So that is the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana and the fourth jhana concentration. So that is right concentration. So the right concentration, my mind is concentrated to do what? To not to have these, you know, the craving, sensual things. So I have the thought of renunciation, thought of non harm thought of non malevolence established in my mind. So that leads to the <clears throat> concentration due to effort. Here, 
I talk about the three parts. First, the right thought. That is the when you come to right thought, we split into three: thought of renunciation, thought of non-violence, thought of non-harm. Now, the first part led to the cessation of the bodily actions, and the second part led to the cessation of my verbal actions, and the third one, what is remaining, is the for me to get rid of these mental actions. So we are not going to cease all the mental actions. We are going to cease some few mental actions, which you learn in the next meditation, like this derogation, the envy, disparaging, the stinginess sort of things. So now you can see we have three things: development of the body, development of virtue, and development of mind. And there is one above and one below. So what is one above? That one above is the right view, and in between we get the right mindfulness. You can see there is a gap over here. That is what we get the right mindfulness. When you, that is called development of wisdom. When you have the development of wisdom developed, that leads to the concentration due to investigation called vimansa samadhi. So this leads to the spiritual powers, the four powers. So the right view, and then we have the right mindfulness. So what is right mindfulness? The right mindfulness, it is consisting of four things. That is this mindfulness regarding body, mindfulness regarding feeling, mindfulness regarding thought, and the mindfulness regarding the doctrine, the teaching. So mindfulness regarding body, for example, sort of remind you the such is form, such is the arising of form, such is the passing away of form, the arising and passing. So arising and passing, uh, we'll be looking at in a little while using the concentration discourse. That is our main meditation today, this morning. So we have been talking about the forms, the body, such is the body, such is the arising of the body, such is the passing of your body. So when, so mindfulness sort of remind you, and then we get the, from the right view, we get the right mindfulness. From the right mindfulness, then pay it back, and it's reminding you about the suffering, what is created, such is arising. Such is the arising of form. It is actually saying, what is arising? If the suffering is the one arising. So then you get the concentration due to desire, and the concentration due to investigation, and therefore you will have the um, cessation of all the mental formations. So you can see, in the first one, we have the cessation of the bodily formations. The next one, we have the cessation of the verbal formations and the cessation of the mental formations, then we go to two parts, and this is the, the last part of that one, that is the concentration due to investigation, where you have the, the feeling, perception, everything can be seized with this one. So we now have the meditation, the right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So, right view is then very important. Without the right view, I don't get the right thought. Right speech proceeds from the right thought. Right action proceeds from the right speech. Likewise, right concentration proceeds from the right mindfulness. And the right knowledge proceeds from the right concentration. And the right liberation proceeds from the right knowledge. For an RN, complete noble one, he has got ten things. For a person who is practicing in the path, has got eight things, consisting of this eightfold path. So, let's look at the right view. For explaining the right view, one very good discourse for learning this round, eightfold path, is something called the Great Forty Discourse in the Middle End, say, Mahachattara Sikha Sutra. In that discourse, Buddha explained before the right view, those explaining about the wrong view. In the wrong view, someone would be saying, there is no mother, there is no father, there is no 
result of sacrificing. There is no uh, Brahmins who knows about the, the world beyond. There is no world beyond and there is no Brahmin or anyone contemplative who knows about the, this world and the, the world beyond. So that's that sort of a view is completely for a lazy person. It is a lazy person's view. You see, when the lazy person knows small and his mother sort of showed him um, sort of a thing, a person who is, you know, cleaning up the street, showing that person said, look, if you don't study, that's where you will be ending up, you know, on the street, you in the, you know, cold weather, heat and so on, you will be start suffering like that. So mother would show him that particular one and then, so this person studied, learned, and he is now doing a good job. And then now what he thinks? I did what my mother said. Now I am happy. Now I will have some alcohol. I will drink these things. I will enjoy my life. Mom, I did what you said. The mother is now going to the temple and sort of doing meritorious deeds and things like that. Or the son is not doing it. Because the mother could not show this person, lazy person, Look, this person was doing this bad thing over here, bad actions, not doing good thing. Look that he actually ended up in the hell. Mother did not have psychic powers to do that one. So therefore this person is, lazy person behaved like that. So now, the opposite of this right to you, of this from this wrong view, that was the wrong view I was explaining, the opposite of that one is right to you. And Buddha said this right view is twofold. But the twofold is that one is mundane, the other one is supramundane. What is the mundane right view? The mundane right view, because of the mundane right view, you go and give alms to the monks, do charity, and you do good things, sort of things, because of your right view. Buddha said this one has a Consequence. The consequence in the sense that you will be born because of this. But Buddha said, do not uh, sort of afraid of doing good things because if you are being born, you will be born in good places. But if you don't do that one, then you wouldn't be born in good places. So don't be afraid of doing good things. But there is this consequence of being born. So that is the mundane right to you. And then there is supramundane right to you. It's a noble one. Completely RA. And it does not produce. It does not let you go into the another birth. It does not have karma. No karmic effect. And what is that one? It is in Pali. It says, Arya chittas anasra chittas. Arya maggan samanginu, Arya maggan bhavitu, prakna, prakna indriya, prakna balam, dhamma vichi sambhujyanga, sammaditi. That is this, Buddha is talking about the wisdom. Wisdom of a person who has attained, attained to the first stage of sainthood, second stage of sainthood, and so on. A wisdom, a power of wisdom, or the faculty of wisdom of such a person. Or else Buddha said, the anasro chittasa, that means taintless mind. Taintless mind is that, uh, it is a really vast mind in a sense, that you have seen a bicycle wheel about to be stopped. It goes a little bit to this side, comes back and then stops in the middle. Likewise, in this, the taintless mind, its mind is completely stopped. You see, we normally, when we see certain things, we always have some sort of essay generated with it. If you see some sort of a tree, apple tree, then you would say that this apple is good for me, you know, the old things you have heard about the apple, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away and all those stories come to your mind. But 
when that is the when when your mind is tense what are we talking about at that particular time what you are talking about is the benefit of the apple for your existence for me that apple is good for my health and it gives a fruit and all those things that's what you are actually talking about but when you have the taintless mind you don't spin you don't have a story you don't have an essay you don't talk you see the apple tree but just apple tree nothing about the apple comes to your mind to go into you know that this is how i am going to exist with it so that's such a mind a wisdom of a such a mind the faculty of wisdom of a such a mind and then the third one would the said is that the um, person who has got the path the path as a factor of attainment so that particular persons um wish them the faculty of wish them or else would the said a person develop in the eightfold path now you are trying to develop the eightfold path so when someone try to develop the eightfold path all of a sudden in the meditation he might get that yes that is right what buddha said is right it is suffering and this is the cause of suffering the craving because of the craving that i come to exist because of my existence that i come to exist that sort of understanding a wisdom come to your mind and that wisdom is the one buddha is talking about so you can see the right view the supramandian right view is a completely noble one with a higher wisdom so that is the wisdom that you are trying to achieve within these three days mm-hmm. put in those whatever effort you can to arrive at those things so now we are looking at the uh, the right view so right view is very important so let's look at our description about the right view so you can see in the right view we were talking about the knowledge of suffering cause of suffering and the cessation of suffering the path leading to the cessation of suffering so we need to look at the first right view the first first of the right view that is the first noble truth so we were talking about the noble truth of suffering birth is suffering aging is suffering death is suffering sorrow lamentation pain sadness and distress are suffering union with what is displeasing is suffering separation from what is pleasing is suffering not getting what one wants is suffering in short the five aggregates of grasping are suffering so buddha is now explaining these terms so which we understand now very important to understand the suffering it is the most rewarding thing for you when you understand the suffering your mind become concentrated you can get the liberated mind when you understand the suffering so you need to put effort otherwise you will not see suffering you need to dig dig deeper mm-hmm. so here the first one is what one sees birth in whatever beings whatever group of beings there is birth coming to be coming forth the appearance of the aggregates the acquisition of the sense bases that one sees called birth whatever group of beings there is birth so let's look at this particular part whatever group of beings there is birth where would we be born we will be born in hell animal realm the plane of departed the human world and the divine world and the brahma world those are the places you will be born there are few others but they are closely associated with these six so examine in these things you do so the hell so let's look at those six places the first one we talk about the hell where is the hell you see some people when the husband and wife fight at home i have heard someone is saying this is the hell this is the hell but it is not the hell this is the human world but there was some sort of a condition like in the hell that arose to that person because of the fight some people i have heard they are saying the hell is underneath the earth 
you know, go underneath the earth and there is the hell. There is no hell underneath the earth. Where is the hell? The hells are those planets, the Mars, the Jupiter, the Saturn, those are the hells. I can travel by mind-made body. I have been, I have seen two hells in that Mars. You know, the Americans have sent a machine to that one. So I saw the machine for the first time by traveling to that one. And it's, it's like a bicycle handle, you can see that I could see there's nothing. You know, dust is accumulating and uh, sort of thing. That machine very slowly moving. And I went over there with Samadhi Mahabharam and then I asked him, is there, any, is there a hell over here? Hmm? And then she said, yes. So we went there. So you see, the machine can't easily go there to the hell. Those living beings are actually underneath. You know, they are craters. So you need to go underneath those craters very deep down. But they are also discovering little by little. You know, few, about two, three years ago, the Americans got a, one uh, photo. If you search on the internet, unusual hole in the mass, then you get that particular picture. And there's a really big, deep well type thing. It's not a well type thing, it's, that is unusual. In the same well you can actually sort of recognize. There's a big hole. Underneath you can't see anything, you know, it goes down. They are also thinking, yeah, this is where these living beings are. This is where the water and things. Yes, they are right. They are there underneath. On those planets, they cannot live outside because either it's very cold or very warm. Or 200, 200 centigrade and so on. So they live underneath. The Jupiter, for example, you can see it's a very big one. It has got 50 moons. It has got more than 70 hells. There are 136 hells counted. There are more hells. So this, about this hell, Buddha is explaining there is a one discourse called wise and fool discourse. In that discourse, Buddha is explaining that foolish person having done this killing, stealing and all those things that he ended up in the hell and there are these punishment in the hell they go these boiled um, you know things to their bodies they burn and they die and um, so various kind of suffering Buddha explained and Buddha said although I explained this one um, it's not finished yet because there are so many and you see, on earth, there are so many uh, countries. So if you are trying to explain the suffering in the every country, how, how much? Then you can say the 136 of earth's type things, bigger ones. Quite a lot, isn't it? And the venerable Moggalla, you know, the one of the chief disciples of the Buddha, he said to this current Mara, the evil one, that um, Venerable Mongala, in one of his past births, he was an evil one. And by that time, he, um, in one Buddha's time, one of the four Buddha's time, that um, evil one took the place of a disguise as a small child and sent some sort of stone to the head of a, one of the chief disciples of the previous um, Buddha. And then the Buddha is going in front, these chief disciples are uh, behind, and they are, one of them is bleeding and uh, walking. And Buddha turned his body. Buddha normally turned his body. You see, we normally, when we look at, we go on the street, we say left, right, and you know, up, and say hi, bye, and so on. Buddha is not doing that one. Buddha is just looking down and walking. And Buddha does not turn his body. And it's a very rare occasion for a Buddha to turn his body and look at. And in this particular moment, Buddha turned his body and said, You exceed your limit. As soon as Buddha said that one, then the Mahara um, had to depart from that particular plane. And he became 
um, he was born in the year hell so venerable mongal nan explained that one of his past births when he went to the hell uh, those people in the hell sent him through his body uh, iron post you know going through his body and he lived with the, with the iron pole for thousand years and how much suffering he had he had a body like a human bone me and head like a, a fish fish like head i have been born i have gone to the hell 40 births backward from this life i can record my past births as well what led me to go to that hell was that uh, the birth before that i killed living beings those days um, people are asking for fresh meat they don't want meat from the fridge sort of scenario they want to have the fresh meat so in my land i have these cows and those creatures bound with ropes so these people coming and asking me to give me a piece from this particular area so while the animal is living i cut that particular part and give it to them so having done these things after death i was born in hell i lived there for 2100 years when i went there those living beings in the hell they grab hold of me they let me sleep in a sort of a chair like dentist chair it's not a comfortable one and then they hold my hands two people holding my hands and i can't move them you know the machine that we have to prune these uh, trees the two handles and there's a sort of a blade there's some sort of machine like that one it has got few gadgets in it there also clip that clip they put into my hand and then they lock the clip using the screw and through this clip they put there are some holes in the clip put some screws to my flesh inside and then they squeeze the handle and then you start to rotate it when you start to rotate it you can see it taking out my flesh very painful i went to the seventh jhana before i actually con- concentrate about this particular incident and i could see that my hand i can't move because they are holding my hands but my legs leg was free to move and it was moving towards my body because i can't tolerate this pain and then i got fainted so they stopped the punishment for that day there's no point punishing the fainted person and next day they grab hold of me there is this uh, kind of acid in uh, hell um is more more concentrated more stronger than the sulfuric acid you know the sulfuric acid you put into your hand it go looking for the water hmm? so this is more stronger than that one it's actually going through the bones as well so they attach that liquid to that clip and then they put it into my that wounded place and squeeze and just imagine you can't put even a surgical spirit to a wound you feel sort of pain what about putting acid to the wounded place again i got fainted and then the punishment is they stop the punishment for that day again they grab hold of me next day also and then there's a, in that particular machine there were two clips one they attach to the left side of the wound the other one to the right side of the wound and then they squeeze the handle now these two clips are moving completely apart what is happening is they remove my flesh they remove my flesh like we remove gloves isn't that the thing i did to that animal while it was living i removed the flesh and gave to the other persons so see because my consciousness like that sort of thing that's why i'll be born in that sort of sort of a hell so after that one i did not have flesh over here it's only the bone and next day also they will grab hold of me and there were another other people who has done this sort of thing so they attach a rope from my left hand the other person's right hand and let's say this is some sort of a carriage way where is a, uh, a some sort of a cart or maybe a train is going 
So I am on this side, the other person on the other side. So they send this car type thing over here. So it actually broke my bone. After that one, I did not have the hand. So I um, attached some sort of iron piece to that one. So my punishment were over. After that one, they gave me a job. The hell has got jobs. And sir, if you are fed up doing your job over here, don't think about going to the hell and doing the job. Those jobs are worse than these jobs here. So, what was my job? Although those people are living underneath the planet, you know, underneath the crust, there are buildings. There are buildings, there are animals, there are plantations as well underneath those things. So, I was working in a three-story building. I was on the ground floor, the, the first one. On the third level, there were these plates, iron plates. And it is hot. And person, um, one, left leg is on the left plate, right leg on the right plate. He is on the top of those plates. He is try, trying to maintain his posture. Little by little, this one is actually moving. The plates are moving. What is happening? There is a fire underneath it. That's why these plates are hot. He is trying to maintain this posture somehow. Because that's the time he can live. And then he is burned from this burning, that this fire. And then after that one, then the next chamber opens. And the person is falling. The burning person is now falling to that chamber. That one is actually a wind. Wind is blowing through that room. And it's like a Bunsen burner. So it's burning and with more oxygen type thing. And then the next plate opens and that's where I am. There is a pond where I am. It's a pond of those acid type thing. At that particular time, that person's only the bones are left. So the bone sounds to be falling to this um, to the pond, acid pond. But because of the wind, it is actually coming to the edge. So my job is I have a rake and I go there and pull the bone and put it to that acid pond. So I can see there are various types of bones, you know, like a human ones and then I can see you know, the bended ones, different, different types of forms. When I look at the right side, I can see an array of those bones. So the killing machines continues like that one. So that is, you know, the what suffering that I have seen. I have seen more, more suffering. I mean, I can go on like that one. So now you can understand birthing hell is suffering. We all have been there. It's like your you know your, your father, mother's place now you normally go back. Hmm? Like that one, it is the place that you um, you are going, you are living most of the time in your life. If someone is not someone has not attained to the first stage of sainthood, that person can go to that place. So, birth in hell is suffering. Then next look at the birth in animal realm. So the animal realm, you can see these creatures, they have the hunger, they have the thirst, they are suffering from this heat and the cold. Is that the, the suffering in the animal realm? Well, there are a lot more than that. Because those who are there for us as well, we have the same problem. But in the animal realm, it is much more. What is the problem in the animal realm? It is often killing. See, those living creatures are live with fear. You have a cat. If you have a cat at home, you can see. When someone is coming outside, he is coming, he is going inside the car, underneath the car or something, hiding. You have a dog at home, you can see, all of a sudden, bark, you know, open the eyes and bark. They are also living with fear. Those animals outside, they are living with fear. Imagine just a mouse is there and then the cat comes, straight away takes their body. Living is over for that little thing. For you to understand how they are living, you need to 
where they are shows. Otherwise, you think, ah, they are suffering, I am fine. You have been born as an animal. I mean, I have been born as an animal as well. So, it's very difficult to get out of those planes when you are born there. So, how do you use their shoes? You know the time, if the robbers came to your house, how fearful you were? Or maybe you went to the city or somewhere, um, you missed the bus, maybe 12 o'clock midnight, you are coming home, walking home, and then you can see <coughs> behind you someone is coming making a noise, tokos, tokos, and so on. And what do you think? You are thinking, oh, this guy might rape me, this guy might kill me, this guy might take my purse, harm me, and so on. You had the fear. You have the fear everywhere in the Australia, New York, or whatever country, you have the same thing if you are walking night time. So, in that fear, with that fear, that little creature lives all the time. Doesn't matter. An elephant. Elephant is also living with that fear. The lion is also living that with that fear. Everyone is with, living with that sort of fear. So the animal realm is suffering. Birthing animal realm, birthing hell. They are suffering. And let's look at the uh, plane of departed. The spirits. You know, I have laid I have seen um, one person in that one, one what is called Preta, the, the, those spirits, Preta in, in Bali. He, that is a lady, that lady is sort of taller, like this, this building, a two story sort of building. And her head is um, like yours, small, but her stomach is sort of one and a half meters wide, very big and very tall. You have seen very old people walking. How do they walk? Very slowly, isn't it? Very slowly they put their leg. Now you would say this lady would be, the old person will, will be walking very fast if you see this lady is walking. Because she is walking very slowly. Because big stomach, small mouth and a tall very difficult for her to walk. So you can see that um, if you have a small mouth and a big stomach, can you feed? You know, it's a very small mouth. What are the food that they are getting? They are getting the food because of your merits. The merits that you pass, having done some good things, you pass merits. That is their food. That's the only person who can get the merits. So, they are living in that particular state. Some live 800 years and so on. So, long time it is suffering. They are hungry. So, you can see the birth in hell is suffering. The animal realm and the plane of departed, it is suffering. Now, let's look at the human world. Where you normally think that you are, I'm fine. And that's what we say, isn't it? Although we are suffering, we say we are fine all the time. Hmm? So, let us look at this human world. You see, to be born in the human world, where you got to be? You got to be a mother's, inside a mother's womb. Is it a good place to be? You are living next to urine and excrement. It's like a canal of urine and excrement. You see, if you recall these instances with the mind-made body, you can see, you can sort of smell the smell of urine, smell of excrement. Because whatever elements we have around this excrement, they are wrapped, you know, they, they got this excrement touched. If there is a toilet, if someone has not flushed the toilet, you can see the smell is there. Come, we can smell over here. Like that one, you are very close to urine and excrement. Then you are coming out. When you are coming out, you are crying. If this is a happy place, why would you cry? If you don't cry, there is another problem. But you can see, you are, you are coming crying because it's not a happy place. So you are coming with those disgusting liquids. 
there was one mother um, told me one intelligent mother she said that when she actually produced the gave birth to the child she was thinking what disgusting thing i have produced this mother is actually very fond of children lovely lovely mother but she got the wisdom at that time so when the nurse gave baby to the her hand she said please wash wash it and give it to me wash the baby and give it to me so then when the baby was washed probably you may be thinking oh that's good now i don't have these dirty things anymore but where is the dirty things they are inside your body you have excrement and urine inside your body you are like a walking toilet the urine and excrement you carry everywhere you go you think that i am beautiful and so on but what is underneath inside you and some people when they are born they die some people have this jaundice the sickness and so on so if you were able to live then you are hungry then you are crying if your mother is giving some milk then it is okay otherwise you are hungry and you pass excrement and you read then you cry again or if the mother is there and cleaning then it's okay otherwise you have this suffering and let's say you may you made up make up to 4 years you could live up to 4 years so then the mother will give you a bag into your shoulder go to school learn when you go to school then those people in the school what they do the children they poke you with pencils pens and so on. bullying and harassment is there is there everywhere is there everywhere you see one person in australia in you probably know that uh, in um, brisbane someone a 16 year old girl jump out of a building because of this bullying and harassment i mean i can remember bullying and harassment when i was small if my father is sort of a bit late to pick me up then there was this chubby boy coming behind me and you know so i was running around a building to escape from him you might remember you once as well so let's say you made up to 18 you could live up to that point then i have seen people in sri lanka others are sleeping this particular person he took a basin put water into it and put his leg to the basin because he he want to study others are sleeping he feels sleepy so he is studying you know so we have much trouble like that one and then if you pass the exam then it's okay otherwise you are again suffer let's say you pass the exam now what you want you yeah, want to have a job so you find a job somewhere if you are in melbourne if let's say you find a job in sydney or somewhere now there are you are not not you are not going from your home you are you are not uh, going to work from your home so you are missing your mother and so on. and then in that work area you know people are say do this do that all those things much trouble and at the end of the month you are actually thinking you i paid my rent i paid this gas bill electricity bill and food cost and all those things and i bought some sort of a blouse or shirt or something and i probably you give your mother or father some money or as well and then at the end there's nothing left and now we are thinking huh? the time that i was with my mother is really good compared to this one because mother was feeding me giving me not giving me any work and kind words and all those things in the office they they do that do this and so on bullying and harassment everything and what do i go i miss my mother's food as well eating from the restaurant and so on. so now so you probably put more effort and then get a good job earn more money now there is another problem now you are thinking you are afraid that the robber will come and take my money or you might be thinking a tax man will come and take my money so therefore you are going after tax consultants to reduce your tax and so on 
Now you think, okay, my problem is now I don't have a house, I will make up, I will, uh, I will buy a house, which must struggle with the loans and all those things, you buy a house. Still your life is not fulfilled, you think, you know, there is something missing, oh, I don't have a wife, I will, I will marry. So those who, people who are already married, you know whether it is now it's okay or not after getting married. Some people think after getting married, they think, okay, our problem is we don't have a child now, so we need to have a child. So you go for even for injections to that effort to get the child. It's not the natural way. Now there's another problem. When the child cries, you, you know, you are crying in that sense. At night time, you know, the mothers know how much trouble they had. Some people I have heard that saying, you know, what a mess. I can't even sleep now. Every two hours I have to feed. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, you know, when the child gets sick, you get sick as well. No much trouble. And the child is 18, but still for you, my baby. So, you can't sort of go to sleep sometimes because, you know, you are after work, you are trying to go to sleep, maybe 10 o'clock, midnight. Uh, when you are looking at, where is my son? Uh, he is still in the uni, doing the assignment. So hold the son and then ask, oh, mom, I can't come today. Or maybe I am coming 2 o'clock, maybe 12 o'clock. So mother is not sleeping because of the, because of the son is there. Because she is afraid that this person, you know, get into accident, then who is going to look after? So, sometimes, you know, the your baby is now 40 years old, but still is a baby. Now you are looking after baby's baby. And then you, you, are, you know, you got the body wrinkled, bend your back and sort of thing, and then you pass away. Is that the happiness? You see, just take some mind one day of that person. What do you do? You take some sort of bag and go to work. When you go to work, in the people in that area, in the work, they say, you do that, do this, do that, and so on. It's all laid down for you. Even you go for holiday and comes back, you get 280 emails or something, and all the work is there for you, isn't it? Remaining for you to be done. So, you see, work is not a good place. Nobody is giving you a job if there isn't a problem. Because there is a problem, people give you a job. Just imagine a doctor. Doctor going to the hospital, she, she can't even put a bag on the table. A nurse is coming. Oh, there is someone coming with bleeding leg. Please come and help. Oh, maybe someone's heart stopped. Please come and help this particular person. So, so much trouble. After attending to all those things at the end, even the doctor is tired in the office. I mean, what you, what doctor was attending to, urine, excrement and all those blood pass, all those things, isn't it? The bodily things. And then in the office also same thing, bullying and harassment. Plenty of that one is there, isn't it? That's why these laws are there, but still bullying and harassment is there. So, at the end, you have done the things that you don't want to do, but your boss is saying, do it. And then you take your bag and go uh, to the shopping mall and fill up something and go home and you want to cook it. Just imagine this may be a person in you know, a typical um, Sri Lankan or maybe a person in Melbourne who is driving for the work for one and a half hours in the morning and then doing the 8 hours job or 10 hours job and coming back driving another 1 and a half hours or so. Maybe you are at home, maybe 8 o'clock. Now you want to cook. Now when you want to cook, you have made up certain things, isn't it? I, I am going to cook from this type of hot plate. You know that the, these days we have these glass plates underneath the hot things or maybe the gas cookers, various type of things. I am cooking from this one. And then I'm going to eat from such and such a table. My neighbor got a square table, I have a round table. And he's eating from this type of chair, I'm eating from this type of chair. So we have made, a, made all those things. I will eat from this sort of a plate, not like the other plate. So we have done so many things around it. But can we eat any of those things? We can't eat the cooker or anything. 
but what he can eat is the whatever the food that on the plate. A beggar, for example, would do the same. The beggar, I'm not asking you to be a beggar, but just compare what he is doing. He is going on begging round and get some food and then eat it and throw it out. But around that one, we accumulated that this side of type of house, this type of plate, and so on. People have got many perceptions. You see, when I told one of my friends in Sri Lanka that I went to UK, he was looking down and sort of said, oh, then you might have um, sort of brought um, those things going over the Thames River. I was wondering what is he talking about. He thinks if you go above the Thames River and buy something, it is tasty. So we get that, that sort of idea sometimes, you know. The food is food, is food whether it's you buy it from the supermarket or it's from the, you know, the, from a fair or whatever, it is just the same. But we make up things. So this person is now going to go to sleep. As I said, if you have a son or daughter, then you have much trouble, you know, then you have to call them and ask why you are not home yet. Then you can't sleep. But let's say you manage to go and sleep after this eating and cooking. Now you think, now this is the best time for me. You know, much suffering starting from the morning to this in the afternoon to the to the night time. Now my happiness is sleeping. So for that one also we have made up things like this, um, you know, queen side bed, size bed, king size bed and so on. But are you actually sleeping in the whole bed? You are actually sleeping about five and five or six inches wide, maybe five, six foot, you know, uh, wide area. The rest is in your mind. And can you sleep into one angle, you know, one side? You see, when we sit down on this chair, we actually change our postures all the time. We we'll stretch our legs and so on. Why? Why do we do that? We do that one because it is suffering. The Petapopadesa, in the, the that is one of the you know the Tripitaka part of the Tripitaka, you know, it says, if someone is not contemplating why we change the postures, then that person would not understand the suffering. We, why we walk? Why we stand up? Because it is suffering. Now if you focus to the bottom part of your body, you can see it is already hurting because of the chair. The back is hurting. That's why we change our postures. We get up and walk and sort of thing. So, so we turn this way, that way and so on because of the suffering. And if you see a nightmare, then much more suffering. And then you want to clean up. You go to the bathroom, wash your face and so on. And you go to the toilet. Then you can, you can see these days it's a big problem as well. I have seen people going with a magazine. You know, it's a big job. If you have constipation or something like that one, it's a big job to do. Mm. And although we laugh at these things, but this, you know, if a dog got get that one, then the dog will die because of the constipation. Um, that is his, the end of his time. Old people, when they are old, they get this problem, either they can't control it, so they pass excrement on the bed, or they they have the constipation when they can't they have this problem. So then you clean up, then you go back to the work again. So where is the happiness? We just examine one day of this life. Where is the happiness? If you say my happiness is that when I eat, you know, I get this bite from here to here throat, that's all, I don't have any, any further. If that is that, that 10 minutes is the happiness. For that 10 minutes, how much work you did, you get up, got up early on the morning, 4 o'clock, went to work with the train or bus or whatever thing with the much trouble and work with that troublesome environment and then coming back, cooking, time you spend for buying the food, when you add them up, this is only 5 minutes from here to here. 
So you see, there is much suffering in the human world. So you can see birth in hell is suffering. Animal runner, the plane of departed, the human runner. And then next examine the divine world, the birth in divine worlds. So you might have heard about the, the divine worlds that there was a war. Um, if there was a war in the divine world, you can see it is suffering. First, where is this divine world? I said where the hells are, where the divine worlds are. You know the South Pole and then you have the North Pole and there is an axis from South Pole to North Pole. You extend that axis. When you go further and to the right side you can see this first divine world, Chatur Maharaj. The four guardian gods live there. And then the Tau the 33 gods. And the Yam, Tusita and so on. So those divine worlds are there in a, with a spiral shape it is going. Further away you can see the Akhanita Brahmarila is there. You, on this earth, the scientists are actually saying the, the weight of these whole planetary systems does not explain. There must be something hidden. Yes, they are hidden. I mean, you can't see them from your naked eye. You need to develop this light meditation to sort of see them. So, I can tell you that I was born there the 15 births backward. Um, going beyond that one, I have been there and I had um, divine birth, world born, born, born in the divine birth. And when I was born, when I was there, when I was young, I was drinking alcohol. In the sense that there is this um, something called um, Asoka flower in India, the Salmal in Sri Lanka. That um, I take, I have a barrel and I pick, put the barrel, fill up with the water, half of it, and put the flowers and then close the lid. Next day morning comes, I go there and open the lid and put my head to that one. So the smell is coming up. From that one I was actually drinking, um, then become drunk. Why would I do that? If the divine worlds are so happy, why would I do that? So there are problems in that world. So what is the similarity? What is the differences between that? Let's look at the similarity first. We have these houses here. They do have houses there. They have ten, eight story buildings and so on. Big ones. We have uh, cars. They do have vehicles as well. There are three, three types of vehicles. One is called at the, the Dibba Yana like a um, vehicle like a car but it's a little bit bigger then there is the Bakuti that is that um, is like a room type vehicle the bigger bigger as a room and there is this um, there's a third one is like a, the spaceship type it's a whole house type thing can move mm -hmm. so you know that people are talking about aliens and sort of spaceships coming and China has got a picture of that one. You can actually see that one on the internet. They have a department. They have taken a picture. Although we say that aliens, they are not actually coming to um, take your planets. Because this is a crappy planet for them. Their planet is really good compared to this one. There are other human worlds. But those humans on those worlds are still living in that, you know, um, era, dinosaur era type thing, they are not developed. This planet, the human beings are the developed ones, so there aren't any spaceships coming from human beings from other planets, but those spaceships that you see are actually coming from divine worlds. Where are they going? They are actually going to the South Pole. South Pole is so beautiful. So underneath, down the earth, you can see this, their South Pole. So they are going they are to um, see those things. So since they are in the north and we are in the south, we are in between. In between is the earth. So that's why we actually, they go through that path. That's why we see them. So these divine worlds, you can see they have 
vehicles, they have roads. We have roads, they have roads. Their roads are beautiful and bigger than ours. They have these trees, beautiful gardens and everything are there. We have these um, theme parks over here where we enjoy. They do have those things as well. So what's the difference? They, we have jobs, they have jobs. And the difference is, is that we live very short lifespan. We live 80 years. The first divine realm, they live 10 million years from the earth's life span is 10 million. The next one 36 million years. Next one 128 million years. The next one Tusita has got 500 million years. That is half a billion. The next one is 2 billion and the next one is 8 billion years. So they live longer. So therefore you can see if you invest something today after long time you get a big investment. The property is sort of things valued very heavily, like that one, since you live longer and you are not even you know, dying and going to hell and sort of uh, very quickly, you are living for a longer time. So that is, that is what it is. Otherwise, the same problem, whatever problem you have, multiply, then you can see it is there. The jealousy is there, envy is there, over there in, that, in that world. So you can see birth in hell, animal realm, plane of departed, human world and divine world, soul suffer. Then let's look, look at the Brahma world. The Brahma world, they, they are born there because of their jhana concentrations. If you take one example for the second jhana concent uh, level, that there is this world called Abhasara, Brahma realm. There they live from delight. So what will happen if you don't have delight? That means if you don't have the rapture, if you don't have the pleasure. It's like that you have not eaten. So the feeling changes, they are affected very much. So you can see then all six planes that we are talking about, birth in those things are suffering. If it is the case, then is there any place that you can think, you close your eyes, ah, I will be born in such a place that there is no suffering. There is no such a place. So that is what Buddha said, the birth is suffering. Whatever roof of being, there is birth and that is suffering. Coming forth, the appearance of the aggregates, the matter, feeling, perception, volition, formation and consciousness, when they come to arise. The acquisition of sense bases, that one is called birth. The sense bases. We get eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. I didn't understand this one at once. I was thinking, why is it happening to have why you know somebody and mine? It took about six months for me to realize those days. But I heard something that there was one monk who who cannot see anymore. He became blind while living. He could read before, now he can't. So in the meditation the time I was thinking, that can happen to me as well. So what will happen if I can't actually sort of see? if I go blind. So I was meditating and I'm thinking about that. Then I was thinking, how can I go get out of this room? I will hit this door and this, this building and so on. How can I go to the toilet? How can I cross the street? How can I drive a car? How can I go to work? How can I buy food? So all the fear coming to me. Then I understood, yes, we get an eye, but we get an impermanent eye. We get an ear, we get impermanent ear. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, all are impermanent. That's why it is the acquisition of sense bases that is suffering. I had a good example for this one. The good example is that when I, <clears throat> I had, when my father, when he was, 82 years old, he couldn't see. He just see some sort of a, you know, shadow type thing. He couldn't hear. If I have to yell at him to, you know, for him to understand something. He couldn't spell. Those days, you know, urine excrement passes while living on the bed. If we, we see that one, we clean it, 
he does not have any idea and he was not drinking water either because it's, they say not tasty and then you can see he couldn't actually uh, sort of feel the body there's some bites insects bites or something that yeah, he does not sort of understand he was um, touching his body and looking at it he does not know but by the time when it was biting he does not know and he couldn't remember either because he could remember one incident when he was young but that's all if I asked him did you eat then he was asking my mother did I eat you see I was thinking if that happened to him he was much stronger than me even that age I could say because maybe they ate good food but if that happened to him then I was thinking it would be the same for me maybe worse you know I hear no stump body and mind so the acquisition of sense basis then it is it is suffering now what we were talking about so far we were talking about only the first one in the first noble truth that is the birth birth is suffering and then Buddha explained the next one aging whatever group of beings there is aging decrepitude broken teeth gray hair wrinkled skin shrinking with age decay of the sense faculties that marks is called aging so you can see that we get the gray hair and so on the wrinkled um, skins now old people the grandma for example when that grandma is going to the in front of a mirror grandma is not spending much time isn't she she is straight away going to get out of that town why because she remember how beautiful she was before now how is she now but she is not thoroughly grabbing that one that perception if she is to if she were to grab that one per, that perception it would be really good but she is thinking ah it is now like this um, when i be born again i'll be nice that is the perception she got you know what she is doing normally when she get that perception she is straight away going and have a jelly bean or something some sweet putting to the to forget that particular feeling notice what she are they are doing after that one i have noticed that that's how we try to forget our feelings all old, old feelings either have a cup of tea coffee or something so you you understand this aging and i have seen four year old boy who was playing outside who was running inside the house now stop the play and showed his mom a hand the hand was a bit of a small patch in it because the beautiful skin is no more the small one so he also understood the aging i mean if the that four year old one understand and then the grandma is understanding it to a certain extent then you are in between so you can see that uh, the aging is suffering and then the sickness is suffering the Buddha explained about 48 kind of sicknesses um, in Girimananda Sutta. We have these um, problems because of the head, you know, and then sickness. We have various kind of sicknesses like this um, cancer, heart, kidney problems. Now you can see all the Buddha was talking about 48. Now we have more than that. and buddha said in the future there are sicknesses but there are no names no names for sicknesses why is that are we running out of words no it is not we have already reached that one you see these days some people are saying i have this particular sickness doctors are doing this test that test this test that test but they can't find it in other words they haven't got a name for it yet that's what it is because they they can't name it because they do not know what it is we have already got that one aren't you all sick 
is there any healthy one over here we all are sick we have at least four sicknesses what is it we have the hunger the thirst the passing of excrement and passing of urine those are counted as sicknesses so when you see someone in a hospital or something don't just go into the arrogance that person got a cancer i don't have it that's what it is coming to our mind we are so arrogant it says i don't have it we are not telling him but inside we have that one just think that whatever thing he has got i might get this afternoon maybe tomorrow maybe next birth don't go and switch on the tv I, I i have noticed this one when i was small last so when i went to hospital and come back when somebody actually switching on the tv i was thinking did that person actually went to the hospital to see that person today uh, they are switching on the tv their suffering is there see that you need to think that you are also subject to the same thing you will get it and then the next one is the death and what is death whatever group of beings whatever group of beings they are passing away removal cutting off disappearance a death a dying and ending a cutting off the aggregates a discarding of the body that one is called the death that's where we start our meditation very heavily having seen the dead body buddha asked us to contemplate that my body is like that one it will be of the same nature i have not exceeded that one i have not escaped from this one it will become like that so i am sure you all have seen dead bodies but the sri lankans for example have seen dead bodies very very well that uh, they uh, um, in sri lanka you can actually keep the dead body at home three days sort of thing so you can see the how the body become you know the eye and all those things and become expanded and swollen uh, how the body color changing and so on i mean i can show you a, a dead body straight away from the internet that um, we are talking about um, this sort of um, dead bodies so having seen a dead body you know that we are pester in nature having seen that one one would be contemplating my body is of the same nature and then buddha asks you to contemplate about the arising and passing away phenomena so what you do having seen a dead body you put your body the next to that body yeah you need to just go into the practical situation where you have actually seen a dead body your grandmother father whoever and that person is lying down you put your body next to that person thinking that you are dead you might may be fighting mind may be fighting in the sense it may be telling oh, that person is died that person is 80 years old that why he is dead you are 40 you don't die you know you are young then you have to teach your mind a lesson teach that is there any age span for dying i have seen people dying from one years time two years time three years time and so on. so there is no age span for dying so then mind may be silent or maybe it is telling you that um that um that person died because of the heart attack you don't have heart problems how do i know whether i have heart a cancer heart and cancer i may have many more so now mind is silent with the name mixed mix to the dead body you leave your body over there don't bury it don't cremate it just let it be there just imagine imagine a naked body in front of you on on a top of carpet lying down for 6 7 days what will happen you see we have nine holes in our body or two in the eye two in the nose one mouth so if 
fifth one, two years, ear holes, we get seven. The place where you are passing urine and the excrements, nine holes. So what will happen from those nine holes? The, from the mouth you can see these things, saliva and things, those things coming up. And the urine, the excrement and those places coming up. Just imagine that situation. When I was actually doing the meditation, when I had just imagined that way, I straight away saw my mouth, this part, the flesh is gone. And one worm coming out of the nose and going inside the, the mouth. You know that this particular one you can see, the worm can come through the nose and go inside the, the mouth. Mm -hmm. That is one of my past births. This meditation is very powerful enough. You want to record one of your instances of death instances of your past birth. So my mind began, became expanded, this disgusting thing, and straight away expanded. Because our mind is holding to this crappy body, which we were regarding as a good thing. And as soon as we realize this is just disgusting thing, the mind become expanded. That's the trick. So mind become expanded, what you need to do, you need to contemplate the arising and the passing away phenomena of this, this disgusting body that we will learn in a little while. So we got to explain this what is happening after the, the death as well. Um, so we just contemplated we just studied up to the birth, aging, sickness and death. So what will happen after death? Are we going to be born straight away? Or are we sort of waiting? You see, <clears throat> when for some people, when they pass away, they straight away go to hell. There is no time. As there are instances where there are no time gaps. You die, you will be born in hell. And for the animal realm also, you are going very quickly. Very few human beings, it's very rare, certain human beings sort of be able to go to the mother's home straight away. Just imagine that your house, though your home is broken today because of earthquake, tsunami, or whatever thing it is. And what is the chance that you will be getting another house to you appealing in a sort of a place that you like straight away? Very rare, isn't it? But there are certain uh, people, for example, let's say a king. A king has got another palace. This palace is broken. The other palace is there. So that person can um, go to that, that house, that palace. It doesn't mean that king is going to be born. It is what I was talking, referring to is that there are people who with there's such a merit that person can sort of straight away go to the uh, expert. What happened to the others? Others are in mind-made body. I can tell you that two births backward, the birth before the last one, I was in Sri Lanka, one particular area called Andhradapur. There I could see my body fallen down. I could see my backside. And I was wondering why the body is not getting up. Little while later, I see that some people come there and lifting up the body and then some people started crying and only on that instance I realized that I am dead. You see when you are, when you die, you are confused. You see when you are coming over here, you said to your friends or your son's daughter or whoever that I will go to this meditation session and come back. But how do you know whether you can go back? You might die over here, you might die on the street. But we have some sort of perception, thinking that we will live. 
when i have put my first leg to the right leg i always think oh, i can put my left leg as well that's why my thinking but i was living to put my right leg forward but my left leg could move to that one because i am dead so this dead body was taken to the house where i was living and um, i could see my i had a sort of a 14 year 15 year old boy a son uh, who was very sad and so people are coming to the house and going crying and so on so at the end of the day i came to the understanding that it is not them that they are suffering it's me that it is suffering why because at the afternoon they are actually eating they are eating i can't eat because a mind made body is a perfect one it has got eye ear nose tongue body and the mind there is subtle body it can actually fly you can it can go to the akanita brahmarila as well it can move from tree to tree and so on about the sky but it can't eat it can't eat the food that we are eating so what's wrong with that because we are not used to that life how many meals you are eating per day you say 3 and by the time you are taking biscuits and all those things you can see 5 6 that many times imagine just you didn't have your lunch for 2 hours 3 hours you are so tired and upset about it what about if you don't eat for 3 4 days you are very upset likewise the mind made body is get troubled because that you cannot eat those food so you can see birth aging sickness and death after death i am in the mind made body since i have not eaten then i have got the pain the suffering dukkha is there and this one disturb in my body the physical body and when the physical body get disturbed then your mind get disturbed when the mind get disturbed you get the sadness so from the pain i come to the sadness from the sadness i come to the sorrow the sorrow is is a really big thing is a big thing in the sense that one one discourse with those explaining is a paragraph is this big is saying that someone some one lady's mother passed away and this lady is going to the junctions towns and so on and ask did you see my mother the person died but she can't believe it i mean i saw this one in somebody got a call phone call from sri lanka that mother passed away that person was saying it cannot be my mother is living because that she spoke to her mother the day before and she can't believe that the mother is dead now at night time so <clears throat> sorrow is such a thing is a really big thing now we understand the gravity of this song but you wouldn't understand at once but it's a really big thing is sir we are going from sorrow to sorrow all the time that's what's happening and then you get the lamentation lamentation is that you know in a funeral house you are crying oh father oh mother oh daughter and so on and then you sort of the words are coming out of your mouth the words are coming out even in the mind made body scenario and i was thinking what happened how did i die was it a heart problem like that one so the words are coming out so lamentation is there and you have seen in funeral houses where people having said those words then they collapse fainted so the distress is there distress itself is a bigger one in the sense you know when you have distress as upayas is the pali word then there is this tendency for you to be born when you have the distress 
you are more likely to go after the sensual pleasures. Do you understand that? When you are tired, you get the sensual pleasures. You see, if you are sensitive, you can see in the afternoon. I mean, even if you do not know, the, the TV man knows about it. That's why he is putting those films in the afternoon. Because if they put the films in the morning, nobody is going to look at. Because you are not tired. After good sleep, you are sort of fresh and you cannot get into that thing. But in the afternoon you are tired, you have the sensual desires coming up and then you easily go into that one. So even they know about this one. distress that lead to the, the existence, that lead to the, the birth. From the distress, you get the separation from what is pleasing. You said separation from what is pleasing. You had a baby type body, birth. And it was subject to aging, the sickness and the death. After death, you are in the mind made body. Now you are separated from dearly loved body. So that is what is called separation from what is pleasing. We won't easily give up, isn't it? You see, you have you seen people 80 years old and they die in the moment of that person. They can't breathe in. They take a breath very slowly. They can't put it out. I have seen them. But they still don't give up this body. This crappy body, you can't even lift up. You can't even bend at that time. You can't even breathe in. But still, you don't give up this one. So this is the dearly loved body. If, a, if someone asks a mother, what would you like? Then the mother will think a little bit and say, my son, my son. And then the other person asks, which son? If you have two of them, three of them, which one? Mother, mother is speechless. But although she says such a thing, but all of a sudden, you know, inside, Maybe the heart pain or something coming up. Ah, no, no talking about the sons. Please take me to the hospital. That's what is going on. So this is the most dearly loved thing. So if you are separated from that one, that is separation from what is pleasing. <coughs> you are separated from husband, wife, children and so on. They are also included. But the big, biggest one is, this one is the one you like most. Mm -hmm. And if you are separated from the <clears throat> dearly loved body, what you left with? If this is the only thing, I mean you had three, three sons, if you had three sons, if one, is, one died, you got two. But this is the only one you had. So you, you have the union with what is displeasing. Like a little boy who would be crying, going up and down saying, I want this toy, I want this toy. Mother said, I can't give you that, I can give you this. So when you give that one, the other boy, boy will throw out that one. Say, I don't, I don't want that one. I want this one. Like that one, you are asking for this body. This is the biggest one. So if you are separated from that one, then what is, what you left with? You leave with what is displacing. Anything else is not appealing. Like that, the, the, the toy mother is offering is not appealing to the boy. Like that one, anything else is not appealing. I have a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you ask, Someone come for the meditation, they say, I haven't got a job. I can't do go for those things. I need to, you know, first sort out this one. Mm -hmm. Likewise, you, you are thinking about this thing. You are separated from your dearly loved ones. And you, whatever thing is not pleasing. Then the next one is not getting what one wants. The not getting what one wants. What does that mean? That means a person who has sort of contemplated and having understood these things to a great extent, then now he is thinking this birth is a bit much trouble. It would be good if I am not going to be born. But although he, he, she thinks that way, that person will be born because of the craving. Someone subject to aging, that person is thinking it would be good if I am not subject to aging. But that person is subject to aging. If there is birth, there, there is aging. Someone subject to sickness think that it would be good if I am not subject to sickness. But that person is subject to sickness. If you have the birth, then there is this aging and sickness. 
someone subject to death think it would be good if i am not subject to death but that person is subject to death so what you are thinking is not getting what one wants is suffering means that you are actually thinking about these 11 terms which we already discussed the other way around you are thinking it would be good if i don't have these things and then in short buddha said this um, five aggregates of grasping are suffering so this is also available in the in a document in the website about the five aggregates of clinging so here we have the form feeling perception volitional formations and consciousness mm-hmm. so form the material thing mm-hmm. the matter what is this matter matter is consisting of four great elements that is this element of extension the element of cohesion element of um, motion and the element of heat these are the the four things so element of these four properties these are four properties these properties are together so the element of extension you can see this remote control is extending from the left right because it has got some sort of hardness so it extend if it is what i can't hold it like that one so you can see the element of extension the hardness is more prominent in the hard things like this material things like earth and so on and then there is this element of cohesion cohesion in physics is the intermolecular attraction force so the liquid things has got this element of cohesion is not the water is the element of cohesion itself it is that you can see it is more prominent and then there is this element of motion if you take air air moves here there so the element of motion is more prominent in the um, air the moving things and then next one is the element of heat you know we have this in our body our body getting dry and um, you are subject to aging the fruits uh, you know get ripen and so on they those things happen because of the heat so these four things are together you cannot separate them the element of extension element of cohesion element of motion and element of heat so whatever thing you know the the building we see here the screens everything the people here these four great elements are there and then the, there are derived qualities like sound the light and all those things they are called the derived qualities so that is matter or the form and then we have feeling feeling is three kind pleasurable feeling displeasure feeling neither pleasurable nor non pleasurable feeling and feeling can be six kinds if you are sitting down on a chair which is not comfortable then you have pain physical pain or if it is comfortable then you can have or physical the happiness comfort so basically take the feeling as three kind pleasure displeasure and neither pleasurable nor non pleasurable and then the next one is the perception from the perception you perceive you perceive red you perceive green you perceive yellow and so on this is the one we the one that take us to this wrong wrong ideas you see when you have hair in your head you comb it treat it spend money and so on and you say it's beautiful the same hair you see on a plate that you are eating you are saying it is disgusting if a waiter serve you with the hair on a plate then you actually blame me me as well so you can't have two perceptions only one can be correct if you are saying it is disgusting when you see on the plate then you need in your head also you should be saying it is disgusting if you are saying it's beautiful on my head then it is beautiful on the plate as well 
So you need to pick up which perception is the correct perception. And the fourth one is the volitional formations, the sanskara in Pali, sometimes translated as habitual tendencies. So these volitional formations, we can say we have bodily formations, verbal formations and the mental formations. What are the bodily formations? Inhaling and exhaling is the bodily formations. And then you have verbal formations, the initial application, sustained application. That's how these words are coming out. So they are called initial application, sustained application, or vitakka vichara in Pali. They are called <coughs> verbal formations. And then we have mental formations, the feeling, the perception, the volition, that sort of thing, they are included in the mental formations. Feeling is Vedana, perception is Sanya. So those things are included in this um, volition formation. Or else we can actually sort of categorize them in terms of the merits and the demerits. So they are called meritorious formations. If you are doing good things, giving alms, doing charity, or going into the first, second, third, fourth jhana concentration, they are called meritorious formations. And the DRR demeritorious formations, when you kill, steal, that sort of thing, you have demeritorious formations. And then the third one is imperturbable, on the an angel. That means it's not shaking. Like this four, fifth jhana, Akasanyayatan, sixth, seventh, and eighth jhana concentration, they are called imperturbable formations. So you can see in terms of merits, demerits, you can sort of categorize as well. The volition formations is playing a very big part in our life. And it is the one, there is one discourse called Kajjani, so the devout discourse in um, connected discourses of the uh, Buddha. And Buddha said, why is it called volitional formations? Buddha said the volitional formations it is called volitional formation because it's construct. It construct condition form as form. It's construct condition feeling as feeling. It's construct condition perception as perception. It's construct condition volition as volition formations. It's construct condition consciousness as consciousness. It's a very important statement here. It is constructing. You see, there is a table over here. But how do you know this is a table? Because your father, mother or the teacher has pinpointed and when you were small, told you there is a chair. So the picture is that four legs and some sort of a flat thing on the top. So whenever you see your father, mother is not here. When you see some four legs and some flat thing on the top, you are saying it's a table. You construct the condition form as form. Similarly, when you talk about a woman or a man, what is there is the four great elements. But then you construct that's some woman, that's some man. You construct condition form as form. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference that when you talk about them in terms of elements for a man or a woman? Same thing, isn't it? Same extreme and same urine, same pus, same blood, that sort of thing. So we construct those things. So it construct the consciousness as well. So then now you understand the consciousness is constructed. It is not that that I am here, I am there and so on. It's a constructed thing. So this is what you are trying to understand in the meditation. It's a construction. So consciousness is six kinds. There is I and the form, there is I consciousness. The ear and the sound, ear consciousness. Nose and the sound, the order, you can see the nose consciousness. So there you can see eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and the mind and the mind has got the Dhamma, ideas. So there is this mind consciousness. So it is like this, if someone made a fire from wood, you say wood fire. If you made it from the cow dung, you say cow dung fire. If it is a gas, gas fire. 
like that one it is made from i and the form then i consciousness ear and the sound then ear consciousness tongue consciousness and so on so buddha said clinging to these these things the matter feeling perception original formation and consciousness and it is suffering it is suffering to cling to those things so now what we are going to do remember the meditation we were talking about the dead body having seen a dead body you put your body next to that body and then you let it be there for 7 8 days don't worry don't cremate it you think you know my body is like that one i let it be there so after that one you can see you will see certain um one of your past births things because the mind made body has got this habit you have gone i mean where where can you go after passing away just imagine is there your mother or father or anything that you can go you are alone so what is left is what belong to you before is the dead body so you come back and see the about the dead body you may be on a tree and looking at this one and then you see these vultures and all those things eating these things and having seen that one you know when you see this body open it's a disgusted feeling your mind become expanded become expanded and you become in the you go into that mind made body scenario you recall that instant when the mind become expanded what you need to do you need to go through the concentration discourse there is a document in your folder is called concentration discourse now we are going to contemplate about the dead body using this discourse okay it says thus i have have i heard at savatti they are the blessed one said this <clears throat> bikku develop concentration bikku who is concentrated understand things as they really are and what does he understand as it really is the origin and passing away of form the origin and passing away of feeling the origin and passing away of perception the origin and passing away of original formation the origin and passing away of consciousness that is what you are going to understand origin and passing we have heard about this one isn't it the origin and the passing the rising and passing so we sort of you think that it's a familiar term i know about that one. as soon as you think that i know about this one i have done the meditation i have done the mindfulness of breathing meditation then you are lost never think that you understand it because you have not understood it you are actually going in this samsara birth to birth that's why you are here as well never think it is that you understood it you might understand a little bit always think i am humble i don't understand this i will try to understand it what buddha said this has a deep meaning so let's not bring anything else other than this meditation looking at the dead body and then contemplating don't bring the elip, the ana pana sati mindfulness of breathing which you i know that you do not know how to do it so don't bring it over here is a very advanced meditation technique which a person like a bodhisattva with the very higher spiritual qualities like not killing stealing not going to you know stealing is going to work is stealing so those things are not there bodhisattva so he can do that so just leave it for these three days you mindfulness of breathing the meditation concentration how you get looking at the dead body okay and you are thinking i do not know the arising and passing and then you are like a little boy or little girl trying to learn what it is and what pick who is the origin of form what is the origin of feeling what is the origin of perception what is the origin of volitional formations what is the origin of consciousness here we go one seek delight one welcomes one remains holy and what is it that one seeks delight in what does one welcome to what does one remain holy one seeks delight in form welcomes it and remains holy to it as a consequence of this delight arises delight in form is clinging with one's clinging as condition existence with the existence as condition birth with birth as condition aging and death sorrow lamentation pain 
displacement and despair come to be. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. You see, it is not like this atom, electron going here and there, you know, arising, passing, that sort of thing. It's a big description, which you think in a mundane terms as a something that I already understand. This is the thing you don't understand. So you need to put effort to understand it. So the, to get into that effort, you need to have that expanded mind. That's why we're looking at the dead body. So the expanded mind is sort of vast. There it can sort of grasp this concept, what it is. One seek delight. In the Pali it is called Abhinandati. One welcomes Abhivadati. One remains holding Ajosayatitati. And what is it that one seeks delight in? What does one welcome? To what does one remain holding? One seeks delight in food, welcomes it and remain holding to it. So let's take a simple example. Watching a TV. So we seek delight in form. We go there and switch on, put the channel, this one is not good, I put the next channel and so That is seek delight. So you put the happy channel and then you sit down and then the pictures are going there. Then you say, ah, oh, mother, oh, son, come, watch this song. It's a really good thing. You welcome it. The seek delight. You say, pressure is mine. You welcome it. And then you remain holding to it. Next week, 7.30 or whatever time, you go there and switch on the TV. At the same time, sit down. You make a room you know, available, you know, time available for that one as well. So that is what you do. And remain holding to it. As a consequence of this, delight arises. What is this delight? Delight is Nandi in Pali. What is Nandi? It is actually a very funny thing. Very funny thing that you send you in this samsara. First, you can see you eat something, a bite. So you can you get a feeling from here to here, isn't it? You get some sort of feeling, and then you pursue that feeling. You apprehend it with your consciousness, with that that feeling. But the consciousness dies. It dies because you know in a feeling passes away that you. Go from here to here, it is standing and it is no more. So what do you do? You mix up something else, some food again, you want to get the same feeling, you feed it. That one also generated a feeling and then you perceived it and then you apprehended it from your consciousness. Now that one is gone as well. So what do you do? Again you put another one. I have seen a mother feeding a small boy. You see that mother was feeding, mixing up and feeding the one bite. That boy was very quick to eat that one and then he opened the mouth. He opens his mouth again. And then somebody asked the mother another question and she was actually mixing it over here and looking at the other side. The boy got angry because he is not getting the feeling because he wanted to Create it very quickly. Very rare you can see such a person. But what I am trying to say here is a game. You got the feeling, it's gone, and you regenerate it using the other one. That one dies, and you get the game. You, I will generate the consciousness again. Now think about in the long term. You have the birth, the aging, sickness, and death. After death, what do you want to do? You want to be born again. You want to generate. The consciousness dies. When the consciousness passes away, you want to generate it again. So you can see, after death also you want to regenerate. So you can see the nandi or the delight is that your desire. You desire to be born again. How did that happen? It happened with these little bites. From here to here, somebody touched you. You heard something beautiful, a song or something. Those things accumulated, now it has become a bigger thing and taking over you. After death also you want to do the same, same thing. So the delight arises. Delight in form is clinging. Now you cling to that form. Don't you? We cling to this food, that thing, that song and so on. We are thoroughly holding to it. With the clinging as condition, the existence. 
the existence. Think about the existence as the existence of the craving. The very same craving. It exists. Let us say to understand the existence that you got some sort of a box and where you put money to it. This box is made from the matter, feeling, perception, volitional formations and consciousness. It's a kind of a special type of a box. It can become bigger, it can become smaller. So you see, let's say you want to eat coppers or you want to eat jelly beans or something. So if you like that one, then you put two dollars to the box. If you see a beautiful woman, you put hundred thousand dollars to the box. If you see a beautiful man, you put hundred thousand dollars to the box or eighty thousand or whatever. If you see a um, beautiful baby, put twenty thousand dollars to the box. If you see a nice dress, you put fifty dollars or so to the box. So, you are in the mind-made body. When you are in the mind-made body, so the, you can see, you can see the box. Now you see the two dollars. Ah, I put two dollars because I want to eat the hoppers or the jelly beans. And would you get a body to eat that one? Yes, you would. You would get a body. But the body that you are getting, you are expecting to have a human body. That's, this may not be the one that you are getting. You get a body. This happened to a monk. The monk got robe materials. He was so fond of that robe material. But unfortunately, by the time where his mind grabbed hold of this robe material, he died. And he was born as a moth. You know, moth can consume the cloth, the rank mud. The monk was thinking that I will, you know, wrap around my body and I will get this cold heat, all those things. You know, I'll be beautiful and so on, on, on that one. But the moth can do it very well. Then the monk, it can eat, it can sleep inside it. It can, you know, pass excrement, urine and all those things with that cloth. So this is the, actually the, the taint of existence, the characteristic of taint of existence is that you have it says in Pali Prarthana Grantha Abhisankara Kai Sankaranti Prarthana you have the aspiration aspiration to have the jelly bean the Grantha ties you are bound to the pleasure that arise by eating the jelly beans Abhisankara Kai Sankaranti that means you are constructing a body for that one. The body, it may be a human body, it may be an animal body. You see, the jelly beans can be eaten by those little creatures as well. So you can become one of them. So the existence generated this one. So that is what is the existence as condition, the birth. With the birth as condition, now you get a parcel. You know, when you order something from the internet, you get a something but around it you can see the bubble wraps and all those things, the papers and all those things you, which you throw out but you were expecting to have that sort of a pleasure but it is wrapped around the much suffering what you get is aching, sickness, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure, despair, come to me. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. See you seek delight in the form that you get, you are ending up with the whole mass of Suffering, a parcel, parcel of suffering. So over here you can see the rising phenomena then is not a simple thing like that we were thinking that you know this atom is, you know, electrons is going there, coming back, the rising, passing. This is a big thing. This is a long term thing. You know, one someone was actually doing the mindfulness of breathing meditation and he was telling me that I can see the um, some sort of a wood piece that it is arising and passing, is vanishing. And then I ask Samkati Mahabrahman, he is in the Brahma world, they can actually see your, through your body and all those things, they have very sharp visions. And I ask them whether is there anyone who can see such a thing? He said no, he's an arahant. And then next day when I meet that person, I said, 
when you actually meditate you hold the pore and then meditate after that only you say no i don't see is arising and passing anymore you know vanishing is not there it's just a mind you know trick that's what happened not the true thing see here you can see what buddha is saying is a long term thing you put a bite to this mouth the feeling generated and for that same feeling because now i you to the game of consciousness arising and passing now i am after death also i am i need to reconstruct it then i cling to it and that craving existed existed within me that is the existence as existence as condition then there is this birth the long term thing so buddha said same thing for the one seek delight in feeling the perception volitional formations and consciousness do we do that do we seek delight in feeling yes we do very very good example is that your own childhood you see you come to this world thinking this world is beautiful and we have some pleasure sort of thing basically you first the moment of you are coming to the mother's womb you really wanted to have the mother's touch the feeling of that one a woman or a man that's what what you were looking for and you get that one for some times in the sense that maybe 2 years 3 years you see when you are small you got quite much comfort today you are eating broccoli cauliflower and sort of thing hmm? they are not they are very hard things isn't it but when you were small you were actually eating you are drinking milk a very soft thing a fine food not with these chemicals and then mother's breast is inside your mouth mouth at that that time you have that soothing effect you are sucking that one so they are like a sooth so two things the milk is good the breast and thirdly the mother's body is touching your body your skin is so smooth mother is so happy to touch that's why we go and actually grab when you see a small child we lift up and hold why the, that child got a excrement urine and all those things but why you do that because they got a soft body whether they are irrespective of the color you like to hold them so you get the happiness from the baby the mother is getting the happiness the baby is getting the happiness from the mother's skin so three things now three contacts and on the top of that one a mother is looking at the baby with the kind eyes kindness is there in her eyes do you get that sort of thing now after that you don't get those four elements mm-hmm. and when you are actually 4 years old then you are separated from that one now oh, mother got another baby you know brother or sister so at that time what mother is doing she mixed up something put you with a table or you eat some so then you have you can see the everything food around your face and so on you are not happy happy to have these crappy things around your mouth and things so you look at your mother can i come to your mom you can't because there is a baby over there so you are separated when you are four the you are your feeling pleasurable feeling when you are 8 9 mother is not touching that much and you are 20 you are off so you can see you are separated from your feeling but you always seek delight in those things hmm? you know the what's the word coming to your mind all the time when you have a trouble oh mother sort of things isn't it mom it's coming up because you actually without knowing you are actually looking for that comfort that compassion and all those things hmm? so we seek delight in feeling so well comes it remain whole in same thing same description to the said well comes it remain whole into it as a consequence of this delight arises and you get the whole mass of suffering so you are contemplating about the arising phenomena of the body which body is it the beautiful this form no the dead body before think about this body the beautiful body and sort of thing then you won't see this dhamma when you see the dead body or disgusting thing you are separated from this one and then you are looking at how did i this 
this sort of thing come to arise. That's the arising phenomenon. So some, for some people to contemplate about the arising part, they say, I don't watch TV. Well, even if I can tell you one good example that everyone is seeking delight in on earth. What is it? It is the food. You came to this world, this earth, because of the food, this crappy food, that rotten mango I was referring to this morning. That's what you were looking for. The persons who were saying that I don't want this crappy food, they went to Brahma world. They are living apart from these crappy things we are eating. So we came here for that one. I can say, tell you one grandma was telling me, son, I don't like anything in the world. I don't have any attachment to anything in the world now. Then I was asking grandma, what about the food that you are eating? I don't like those things anymore. I don't like, I don't have attachment to those things. So what you need to do, take your grandma, give her a ride, take her to a supermarket or somewhere, or fair, food fair. So she will be saying, buy that one, buy this one. And at that particular time, you need to pinpoint, ah, you like that one, don't you? Because she is always buying what she likes. So we all have this thing. So rather than denying that I don't have this one, now you go for this one. Do I seek delight in this food or TV or whatever it is? Welcome it remain what You go through the description, the Buddha's description. Like you are cooking, using a recipe. How do you cook? So you take one spoon of salt and vinegar and so on. And so you get the ingredients and put that one. So in the same way you ask this question. Do I seek delight in food? Yes, I do. I like to eat this tofu or whatever you are going to eat. So you are saying, yes, I seek delight in this one. I welcome it. I remain holy to it. So... Therefore, isn't there this delight in me? Yes, delight is there. I am, I am happy to be born again for this one as well. So that is clinging. The delight in form is clinging. As a clinging as condition, the existence, that one exists within me. As existence as condition, the birth come to be. So you sort of put a tick into your recipe. You know, I have done this soul part and so on. So see, delight, this description you fit into like that you are cooking. So this is the arising part. And so this is, Buddha said, <clears throat> Bhikkhu, this is the origin of form, origin of feeling, origin of perception, origin of volitional formations, this is the origin of consciousness. And Buddha explained the other way around, at what Bhikkhu is the passing away of form? What is passing away of feeling? Passing away of perception? What is passing away of volitional formations? What is the passing away of consciousness? Here because one does not seek delight. One does not welcome. One does not remain holy. And what is it that one does not seek delight in? What doesn't one welcome? To what doesn't one remain holy? One does not seek delight in form. Does not welcome. It does not remain holy to it. As a consequence of this, delight in form ceases. With the cessation of delight comes a cessation of clinging. With the cessation of clinging comes cessation of existence. With the cessation of existence comes the cessation of birth. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. So the other way around. So take the example of TV. If one is not seeking delight in TV, means we are not going to switch on the TV. Although some people don't switch on the TV, sometimes there are people saying, I don't watch TV anymore, but um, I heard that there is a cricket match going on. If you want, you can go and watch. Why is he saying that? Because the other person will look at it and tell me the score after that one. Hmm? So, does not welcome means you are not going to do that one either. Does not remain holding for the next year or so and so on. Next birth, you are not going to see delight in those things. So the delight sees us. With the cessation of delight comes the cessation of clinging. There is nothing that I am holding to. So since there is no, not, there isn't anything that I am holding to, then there is the cessation of existence. If you take that example of the box I was talking about, you still eat jelly beans, but you don't put two dollars to the box. You see a beautiful woman, 
you don't put one hundred thousand dollars to the box. You see a beautiful man, you don't put one hundred thousand dollars to the box. So you can see if you are in the mind made body after death, you see the box. Your box is empty. There is nothing, no purpose. Since the box is empty, you can see that there is. I won't be born, and that's the only way that to get rid of this suffering. As far as we are seeking, we life will be born. If you are not doing that one, then we can get rid of. That is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. So Buddha said same thing for the feeling. The one seek delight in feeling, welcomes it, remain holding to it. So by doing that one, this thing arises. So if you are not doing that one, does not seek delight in feeling, does not welcome, does not remain holding to it. Then there is no delight in feeling. Similarly, perception, volition, formations, consciousness. So this is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. This bhikkhu is the passing away of form. This is the passing away of feeling. This is the passing away of perception. This is the passing away of volitional formations. This is the passing away of consciousness. So now you contemplate about the arising and the passing with that dead body. So when your mind expanded, when you see that disgusting body in the worms coming out, or you will see, depending on your your former births. Um, you see that one. If you don't see it, doesn't matter. If you are, if you see it, you are lucky in that sense because you got the kick. You know, you expanded and that one. Even if you don't see it, um, just go through the concentration discourse and try to see it like a recipe. You are cooking with the recipe. Now you close the recipe. Then you cook from your mind. You ask this question: How did I make this happen? How did I make this disgusting body come to arise? And then you might get a, a fortunate answer. It is because of my craving. It is because of my existence, or it, it, because of my clinging. If you get that one, that is your happy moment. So it is. It's not just faking. It is. It should be coming with the understanding. You contemplate about the arising. You contemplate about the passing. Having contemplated, you close the book, and then you ask yourself this question: the disgusting body, how it come to arise? So that is the meditation you are doing. But over here, anywhere, did Buddha said to you to give up anything? No, isn't it? Buddha was asking you to contemplate about the arising, and Buddha is asking you to contemplate about the passing away. Buddha said, "Did not mention anywhere. Give up these things. So don't do it at the time of the meditation. You see, the one mistake people are doing: they mix up the arising and passing together. If you do that, one, what will happen? You are saying now, okay, this suffering is because of craving, so I will, I will give up. So little, little while later, your the consciousness is questioning yourself. It is asking." How are you going to live? Because when you say you give up craving, then you are giving up your job and everything. So how are you going to live? And then you are thinking a way to live. You know, my sister will feed me, my my brother will feed me. Oh, can they actually feed me? You know, then whether they have children as well, can they afford to feed me? Now you are trying to solve the problem of eating. You are not meditating on the on the subject. Hmm? So don't mix up. Don't give up anything yet. Well, there will be a time in the meditation these three days that you you, have, you can actually do that. But here we are actually trying to break break a view, the view that I am. You know, when you actually look at that I am, how it is constructed. That is what actually Buddha said. This I am is constructed because of these things. So the arising and passing. Go through the Buddha's description. Word by word, and that is your contemplation. So, as I said, that I have shown you one dead body that was stage nine, and I can show you these dead bodies. This is the um, stage one. This um, a person when he passes away, passed away, um, monks got got approval from the government to um, keep it, and they. Look at it and meditate. So this is the first stage. 
and then you can see this black becoming black over there and then the fleas are around the body in the third stage and you can see it's covering up the face and then you can see they are fighting isn't it to go inside and then the parts of the mouth taken out and then you can see the whole body is becoming like that and further decay and you can see the body how it is subject to the further decay and so on and stage 11 and you can see the tooth fallen I think over here and the fleas are here and there and now it is um, mixing up with the soil bit by bit so that is our life so having seen a dead body you contemplate the arising and passing away phenomena of that one using the concentration discourse so how do we start the meditation you simply look at the birth birth in those places you don't have to need to go into the the hell sort of scenario when it's very thoroughly but those are the six planes and now you understand that there isn't any place for me to be born without the suffering and then there is aging think about how you were subject to aging you are already subject to aging and then the death uh, the sickness and over there you need to think having seen a sick person you should think that I will be subject to the same thing I will become like that one and then the death when it comes to death you haven't seen a dead body you put your dead body next to that dead body be there at that one you don't need to make my eyes like that one ears like that one and so on don't try to do that one. if it is naturally coming up it is fine but you just think that I am dead and let it be there don't worry don't cremate it let it be there for seven eight days and then just imagine a naked body with these nine holes in the body how it is so disgusting things coming out of that one and you might see the vultures and all those creatures have eaten it part of it and when you try to imagine then you, re you will recall one of your past births um, and then your mind become expanded having seen that disgusting thing and that when it is expanded you contemplate about the arising and passing away phenomena using the concentration is course mm -hmm. Like uh, I, I mentioned how to meditate using the like a recipe. Go word by word. The one seek delighting form welcomes it remain whole body. By doing that one, the delighting form comes to arise. The delighting form is clinging. As clinging as condition, the existence, the existence as condition, the birth come to be. Mm? This is the arising of whole mass of suffering. So you contemplate about the arising and then you contemplate about the passing away phenomena. So what we do, we will take sort of a 10 minutes break. Um, so there are other teachers over here um, who can actually help you in the meditation, how to do the meditation in short. I know some of you don't need that one, but the new people. So there are few teachers um, around, so they will teach you how to do the meditation. That one.